Magandang araw muli sa inyong lahat. My name is Dr. Jeffrey Reboron and welcome to another pre-recorded lecture for the subject NCM 107, Care of the Mother, the Child, and the Adolescent. Please bring out your handouts and your ball pen so that we can start our discussion. Before we formally start our session, allow me to present to you our module objectives. After the end of the session, you, my students, will be able to have a better understanding of the stages of growth and development. And aside from that, you are also expected to become more familiarized with the psychosocial and the psychosexual development theories of Eric Erikson and Sigmund Freud. Again, I hope that you have already printed your note-taking guide or your handouts so that you can follow along our discussion together. So maaari lamang po ay ilabas ninyo na ang inyong mga uh, handouts, ang inyong mga papers and ball pens so that you can take down notes as I discuss to you our very interesting topics for our session together. When we talk about the stages of growth and development, we have four different factions. And the first is what we call the prenatal stage. It is also known as the fetal stage or the embryonic stage. And this begins from conception up to birth. This is also known as the stage of organogenesis wherein the bodily organs of a fetus begins to develop. Always remember that the start of the prenatal stage is from the ninth week after fertilization up to the 38th week or until the child is already born. So when the child or the fetus is already nine weeks old and the fetus is still inside the womb of the mother, the unborn child is basically termed as the fetus. Now we also have the second stage, which is what we call the postnatal stage. So coming from the word post, meaning after, delivery, meaning natal. So postnatal stage begins from birth after the first year or the first 12 months of life. When we talk about neonates, those are individuals who are on their first 28 days of existence or on their first four weeks of life. We call them neonates when they are in the neonatal stage. Always remember that during the neonatal period, the system is transitioning from the uterine environment into the external environment. Always remember that the lungs and the heart of the unborn child has a different functioning or has a different physiology when the child is already born out of the out into the world so the child who is in still inside the womb of the mother is not yet using his or her lungs it is using the placenta for oxygenation however when the child comes out of the womb the child no longer has the placenta to breathe in for him or her. So the child will start to use the lungs. So tatandaan nyo lagi that during the neonatal period, this is the stage wherein the system's transition from the uterine environment into the external world. You also have to remember that the development of the different systems of the body continue even after birth. Diba nga sa fetal stage, it's, it is the organogenesis. So pag pinanganak po yung bata, nagko-continue po yung development niya after birth. Now, we also have the term infancy. And this is defined as the first 29, ay, the 29th day up to the first year of life or from 29th day up to the 12th month of life. So ano pong nangyayari during the infancy period? This is the most rapid stage wherein there is growth and development that is spurring. So sobrang bilis po ng growth and development ng uh, mga infants because their birth weight, yung timbang nila pag sila ay pinanganak, it doubles during this stage. So sabi dito, the birth weight 
increases and the birth length also increases and there are also a lot of developmental skills that are being discovered by the child during the infancy period. We also have the third stage, which is what we call the early childhood stage. And this happens during the first year up to the sixth year of life. When we talk about toddlerhood, this pertains to the first year, to the third year of life. So toddlers po ang tawag natin pag yung isang individual is one year old up to three years old. Now, during this stage, the child makes a slow but important shift from being a dependent infant to an independent individual. During the toddlerhood period, the child will already start to do things on his or her own. So, kung dati, pag yung infancy pa lang niya, pa lang siya, I should say, the child uh, depends on the mother for activities like feeding, activities like urination, defecation. Pero dito po sa toddlerhood, the child is already attempting to do those things on his own. Now we also have what we call the preschool period. And preschooler po ang tawag natin sa mga bata who are under the ages 4, and six years old. The preschoolers also grow quickly, both physically and cognitively. Ito po yung mga stage wherein the child is no longer uh, falling on his face when he runs. So, kayang-kaya na niyang maglakad on his own, mag-explore. Kaya nga po, sobrang bilis ng development and growth both physically and cognitively during this period. The preschoolers also begin to lose their baby fat. They lose their chubbiness at around three, uh, at the age of three. And the child's trunk and limbs also grow longer and the abdominal muscles begin to form. It is not unusual for us to hear people commenting, Ala, apaya nga nagtayag kami tengin kimutung ka to a four-year-old child. That is normal because you are ex uh, it is expected that preschoolers will lose their baby fats and chubbiness when they reach a certain age. The preschoolers also love to talk incessantly. Salita sila ng salita and they also love asking questions. That is the reason why they also have improved cognitive skills during the preschool period. Now, the fourth stage is what we call the middle childhood. We have school agers who are 6 years old to 11 years old. The schoolers develop smooth and strong motor skills. Anong ibig sabihin nito? They have already completed the development of their control of the different body organs or body uh, functions. Therefore, they can already write neatly, they can already dress appropriately, they can already perform certain chores when they are 6 to 11 years of life. Uh, there is also differences in height and weight and build, which becomes more noticeable. So yung mga batang medyo chubby noong mga uh, toddlerhood nila or preschool period, they already have a noticeable change in how they look and how they weigh and how tall they are. So, mas nagiging obvious po yung changes during the school age period. You also have to remind the parents of the school agers that nutrition and exercise may have an effect on their child's growth and development. So, you have to watch out for the proper intake of nutrients of the Kid. Kasi nga, pag schooler yung bata, mahilig na siyang kumain ng mga junk foods or nagsiskip na siya ng meals dahil mas importante na sa kanya ang paglaro. So you have to remind the parents that nutrition along with exercise and play may affect their child's growth and development. 
We also have what we call the ado adolescent period or uh, the period wherein the child is already 12 years old up to the 16th uh, year of life. The adolescent period or the adolescence is the period of transition between the childhood and adulthood. Ito po yung tinatawag natin na a crossroads. Yung bata is, not, is no longer a child, but the, that person is no lo, not yet an adult. So yung stage na yun po is what we call the adolescent period or the adolescence. Always remember that during this stage, big changes occur in the body and to the way the young person relates to the world. Anong ibig sabihin nito? The child will already have physical, sexual, cognitive, social, and emotional changes that happen during this period. So, nagkakaroon na siya ng pubic hair, nagkakaroon na siya ng increase in the uh, breast size and hip size for women, nagiging mas mababa na yung uh, boses ng mga lalaki, and other things like that. So, nagkakaroon na siya ng mga uh, noticeable changes in the body. And then, pati yung pag-iisip nila, they are no longer interested in playing with other kids uh, who belong to the same sex as they are, mas interested na sila sa mga uh, activities that relate to the opposite sex. So those are the noticeable physical, sexual, cognitive, and social changes that occur during the adolescent period. There is also the development of secondary sex characteristics like I told you a while ago, including the growth of pubic hair, enlarged breast, widened hips, and facial hair, and Adam's apple for males. So, nangyayari ito because of the presence of the hormones that only appear during the adolescent period. So, those are the different stages of growth and development of an individual. And I advise that you try to memorize and understand these different stages because you will be using them to further understand the topics on the theories of growth and development. Now, we also talk about the patterns of growth and development. Always remember that there is a term which we call general growth. Anong ibig sabihin nito? That the respiratory system, digestive, the renal or excretory system, the musculoskeletal system, and the circulatory tissues of the body, they proceed smoothly and gradually during the adulthood. So, wala pong spurt na nangyayari, wala pong pagtigil ang nangyayari dito. Ibig sabihin, tuloy-tuloy ang pag-grow ng mga systems na ito when we talk about general growth. However, we have to remember that there are body parts which mature faster or which mature slower than the others. And they are as follows. Number one is your neurologic system including the brain and the spinal cord and the neural pathway, yung neuro neurologic system po ng bata, they grow rapidly on the first two to five years. Ibig sabihin, mabilis po yung growth and development ng brain at ng spinal cord sa unang taon hanggang sa ikalimang taon ng bata. Why is it necessary? Because the neurologic system's development and growth is preparing the child to develop his motor and sensory skills. Kasi nga sa first five years po ng bata, matututunan niya kung paano i-control yung kanyang mga kamay at paa at ulo. Matututo siyang magsalita. Therefore, kailangan ding mabilis ang pag-grow and pag-develop ng brain at ng spinal cord so that the body can cope with the different changes in the environment. So, magsisimula na kasi yung bata na maglakad. So, dapat intact yung kanyang brain and spinal cord and siya ay develop properly according to age. Can you just imagine yung bata na hindi nag-develop ng mabuti yung kanyang neurologic system? Five years old na siya, hindi pa siya nakakapaglakad. Five years old na siya, hindi pa siya nakakapagsalita ng simple words. Bakit? Kasi nga, underdeveloped yung kanyang brain. So that is the reason why during the first five years of life, 
the neurologic tissues of the child, including the brain and the spinal cord, will have to develop rapidly to prepare the child for his motor and sensory skills. Another uh, change or another organ that changes uh, differently is what we call your lymphoid tissue. Your lymphoid tissues are actually responsible for the uh, antibodies, the production of antibodies in an individual. The lymphoid tissues rapidly grow during infancy and childhood, and this is to provide protection to the child against infection. Always remember that an individual, uh, a child, is not yet, if a child is not yet vaccinated, he or she is prone to developing certain diseases coming from bacteria, viruses, and fungi, and other things like that. So yung bata kasi, during the uh, first few months, the child is not yet able to receive proper vaccination. So hindi pa siya protected sa mga different diseases because of lack of vaccination. Kaya nga po kailangan mag-grow and develop ng lymphoid tissues rapidly para maprotektahan pa rin yung infant from these diseases even without vaccination. And lastly, we also have the reproductive system or this includes the genitals of an individual. Dito naman po, during the first few years of life, first 12 years to be specific, the reproductive tissues of an individual remains dormant or inactive until adolescent period. They will only show growth up until puberty. At ano ang nangyayari po during puberty? The secondary sex characteristics of an individual will begin to appear and the estrogen and testosterone levels are produced during adolescent period. Therefore, yung, se yung penis ng lalaki, yung vagina ng babae, nag na ng shape during the adolescent period. Nagkakaroon na din sila ng mga pubic hair, pagbaba ng boses, pag widen ng hips, paglaki ng suso, because the uh, reproduct reproductive tissues are already active during this stage. Parang nakakatakot naman kung pagkapanganak pa lang, active na yung reproductive tissues mo. So, makakakita tayo ng mga bata na malalaki ang suso, malalaki ang titi, if that happens. So, remember that the reproductive tissues or the genitals of a person remain dormant or inactive from the first 12 years of life and they only get activated during the adolescent period. Oops, teka lang muna, wait. Before we proceed with our discussion, I would like to check the attendance of those students who are really um, part of this class. So kung kayo po ay talagang nakikinig sa aking klase ngayon, even though it is pre-recorded, I would like you to take a selfie with your handouts and then upload it on our group chat. So dito ko po malalaman na talagang kayo ay nakikinig sa aking mga videos at kayo talaga ay nagpa-participate sa aking class. So what I want you to do is take a picture of yourself and holding your handouts and then you upload it on our Facebook Messenger with the caption ng favorite mong ulam. Okay? So dapat yung caption, caption na ilalagay mo doon sa picture na i-upload mo is your favorite Ulam. And that is how I know that you really listened to our uh, lecture for today. So, yun lang muna and then we will continue with our discussion. Now that you have learned about the different patterns of growth and development, we now proceed to the different theories that are surrounding growth and development. So, for this class, we will be discussing about four main theories which are connected to the growth and development of the individual. We will be discussing about the psychoanalytical or the psychosexual theory by Sir Sigmund Freud. We will also be talking about the psychosocial development theory by Eric Erikson. We will also be discussing about the cognitive development theory by Sir Jean Piaget. And lastly, we will be talking about the moral development theory by Lawrence Kohlberg. So those are the four growth and development theories that will be covered in your pediatrics class. Alright. 
Before we begin, let us have a definition of what a theory is. Theory is defined as a systematic statement of principles that provide framework for explaining a phenomenon. This means that a theory is neither true or neither false. Anong ibig sabihin nito? This means that a theory is the most acceptable explanation of a specific phenomenon and it is considered true unless there is another body of knowledge which will disprove the theory. Let's say, for example, the theory of creation. Other people believe, most of us believe, that we were created under the image and likeness of a supreme being which we call God. And our religion is actually just a theory that is just an existing opinion on how the human being is uh, created. However, there was a theorist who is named Charles Darwin who came up with another theory which challenged our belief in creation. And this is what you call the theory of evolution. Sabi naman ni Charles Darwin that an individual or the human race was not created by God. Pero tayo ay nanggaling sa mga monkeys. In that our, the changes in our environment and the changes in our needs were the reasons why we had to adapt to certain conditions. Kaya nga po, nag-change tayo, nag-evolve tayo from being monkeys with tails to human beings who can walk using both feet. So yun po yung concept ng theory. It is an accepted uh, explanation of something that has not yet been proven or disproven yet. So until another fact or another information comes along, this theory still stands. Now, always remember that in the theories surrounding the growth and development of an individual, we have what we call developmental tasks. And these tasks are a skill or growth responsibility that arises at a particular time of an individual's life. Ibig sabihin, during the different life stages that we have discussed a while ago, meron daw tayong developmental task or project or objective na kailangang inaatain. And the achievement of these tasks will lead to the accomplishment of future tasks. Therefore, will also lead to the growth and development of a person. So, yun po yung basic na similar concepts ng mga theories of growth and development. Now, our first theory is the psychosexual or the psychoanalytical theory by Sir Sigmund Freud. And this theory was promulgated from the years 1856 to the year 1939 by Sigmund Freud, who is an Australian neurologist and the founder of psychoanalysis. So, Sigmund Freud proposed the psychosexual theory, and he based his theory in observing mentally disturbed clients. According to Sigmund Freud, the behavior of a person is an instinctive drive or libido, or libog in Tagalog, which is the response to the ego or the reality, to the id or the self, and the superego or conscience. So basically, what Sigmund Freud is saying is that our behavior, our attitude is based on our sexual drives or in, Ilocan, in, in Tagalog, libog. The libog or the sexual drive of a person affects his or her attitude or behavior. Now, the psychosexual or the psychoanalysis theory believes that the child development is a series of psychosexual stages in which a child's sexual gratification becomes the focus becomes focused on a particular body part. So sabi din dito, aside from the fact that the sexual needs of the person affects behavior, according to Sigmund Freud, 
the sexual needs is also focused on a particular body part. Anong ibig sabihin nito? That the libido or the libog is transient. Pabago-bago siya ng position sa different body parts natin. And because of that, because sa pagbago-bago ng mga position ng ating libog or ng libido, that now affects how a person behaves. So, sabi dito, the libido starts from the mouth, goes to the anus, goes to the phallic stage, or to the phallus, I mean, and then magiging dormant yan, go, going back to the genitals. So, yun po yung pag-iiba ng psychosexual uh, theory Sigmund Freud. Now, let us uh, look into the psychoanalytical theory deeper. We have the term fixation in the psychosexual stage. Ang sabi dito, fixation is a condition in which a person fails to meet a certain task or a certain sexual desire. Sabi dito, if a person is not able to meet and satisfy the sexual needs, babalikan niya po yun when he grows older. Alright? So that is the concept of fixation. Now, with Look into the infancy and its psychoanalytical stage along with the play of an individual. So, bag infant daw yung bata, the play that is engaged by the individual is what we call solitary play. Coming from the word solitary or solo, meaning the child is able to play on his or her own. So, the best toys po dito ay yung mga kaya niyang laruin na mag-isa lang siya. Example of that is the maracas or the rattle. Nakikita din natin dito yung bata, meron siyang nilalarong parang mga um, toy that will create sound. So, this toy alone is enough for the child to play on his own. Kasi nga, ang pinaka-importante dito, basta naglalaro at may ginagawa yung bata, that is already considered solitary play. Now, we talk about the sexual stage of the infant. And the psychosexual stage of an infant is the oral stage. According to Sigmund Freud, on the first year of life, the libido is centered on the mouth of the child. Doon daw po nakasentro yung libido or libog ng isang bata. And anong ibig sabihin nito? The child will use his mouth to satisfy his needs. The child will explore the world using his mouth Therefore, he will suck for enjoyment, he will suck for relief of tension, and he will also suck for nourishment. Anong ibig sabihin nito? When you give a, a crying infant something, ang gagawin niya, automatically isusubo niya yon. Why? Because the libido is centered on the mouth of the child. Now, what does this imply? We have to remember that the child's needs are met using his mouth. So what do we do as midwives? We should provide oral stimulation by giving pacifiers. Aside from that, you also have to give uh, breastfeeding to the child. You have uh, to allow the child to suck because that is how uh, the child explores the world. That is how the child enjoys things. That is how the child relieves his tension. Yung libido nga ng bata is centered on the mouth. So you have to give them the opportunity to satisfy this sexual craving. So like I said, we should not discourage thumb sucking because it is also important for the development of an individual. So that is the psychosexual stage of an infant, which is the oral stage. Now, pag tumanda po yung bata, yung libido will now go to another body part. So for toddlerhood po, it is the anal stage or the libido is centered on the anus of an individual. So the child will now learn to find pleasure to control his or her urination and defecation. So sabi ng bata dito, Nay, Ang sarap pala ng feeling pag nakokontrol ko na yung aking pag-ihi at pagdumi. So, ibig sabihin, there is sexual gratification that the child experiences 
during the toddlerhood when he is still in his anal stage. Always remember that during this stage, elimination takes new importance. Napaka-importante sa bata yung kanyang pag-ihi at pagtae because he or she finds it an activity that is very pleasurable. Uh, defecation and elimination also is a way of self-discovery and a way of exerting independence. Kaya nga po naririnig natin yung mga toddlers na sinasabing, Mama, ako na lang po, iihi na lang ako mag-isa or tatae na lang ako mag-isa because elimination and uh, urination and defecation also is a way of them exerting their sense of autonomy. So what do we do as midwives when we are caring for toddlers? You have to at help them achieve bowel and bladder control without undue emphasis on its importance. Anong ibig sabihin nito? We should already start potty training an individual. Pwede na natin silang i-train kung paano tumae or umihi properly. And we also have to give them autonomy or we have to allow them their sense of independence. Kung gusto niyang ibaba yung shorts niyang mag-isa para umihi, let them do it. Kung gusto niyang umupo at mag-CR mag-isa, let them do it. But do not be too lax or too strict to a child. So, uh, that is the psychosexual stage of the toddler, which is the anal stage. And the child already uh, finds pleasure in controlling urination and defecation. Now, when we talk about the play of an individual, it is what we call the parallel play. Pag toddlerhood po ang pinag-uusapan natin. When we say parallel lines, these are lines that are together, that are adjacent together, but they will never meet. Same is true with children doing parallel play. So kung mapapatin nyo po dito sa picture, magkatabi sila, they are playing together, but they are not playing with each other. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Pwede silang maglaro sa isang room, but they will never share their toys. Parallel nga po. Naglalaro sila ng sabay, pero hindi sila magkalaro. Why? Because children, during this stage of toddlerhood, they want to exert their autonomy, independence, and territory. So dito po, gustong gusto nila na meron silang sariling possessions. Ayaw nilang napapakialaman sila. And that is the reason why they engage in these kinds of play. Maglalaro tayo ng sabay, pero you will not touch my toys and I will not touch yours. Ganun po ang concept ng parallel play. We also have the play of the preschooler. And that is what we call the associative play. Coming from the word associative, okay, it means relating with other people, pero wala pang sense of competition. So dito po, meron ng playing together na nagaganap. Ibig sabihin, these children are comfortable sharing toys with other people and these kinds of play generally do not have a winner or a loser. Kaya nga siya tinawag na associative play. A good example of this is bahay-bahayan, lutulutuan, doktor-doktoran, wala pong nananalo at natatalo doon, but it entails cooperation and association with other individuals. So yun po yung pinakamagandang play ng mga preschool period. Now, when we talk about the psychosexual stage of the preschooler, yan po yung tinatawag natin na phallic stage or coming from the word phallus, meaning genitals. The child learns his, sexual, his or her sexual identity through the awareness of the genital organ. So kung kanina po sa toddlerhood, yung kanyang center of gratification is the anus, yung libido po, nag-move na naman, pumunta na naman sa genitals ng bata. So the child will have, will find sexual pleasure in the awareness of his or her genital area. So nung ibig sabihin nito, masturbation and exhibitionism is common during the phallic stage or the preschool period. Bakit po? Kasi nga yung bata, na-enjoy niya, na-discover yung kanyang sexual identity. So what will the child do? The child will fondle with his or her 
penis or the vagina. Biding-bidingin na or bistra-bistraden na. Dejay, a vagina or penis na. And that is because they want to learn about their sexual identity. When we say exhibitionism po, it is the act of displaying oneself in the nude. So that in Ubing, this child loves to go out of his room to play without any clothes on. Ginagawa niya ito because he or she wants to learn about his or her sexual identity. Napaka-importante po sa kanya na namalaman kung ano yung kanyang genital organ. Very interested po siya dito sa kanyang either vagina or penis, kaya nga lagi niyang nilalaro or lagi niyang pinapakita sa ibang tao. Now, they do this not because they are sexually preoccupied, but because they hope for more knowledge regarding their sexual identity. So what do we do when we have patients who are preschool, in their preschool period? We have to accept their sexual interests, including the fondling of their genitals, as a normal area of exploration. Wag po nating sasabihin na manyakis yung bata or sexually preoccupied yung bata just because the child engages in masturbation and exhibitionism. Hindi po yun totoo. The child is just doing that because he is exploring or she is exploring his or her sexual organ. So what do we do kung nakakakita tayo ng mga batang nagmamasturbate? We just offer alternatives and set limitations. So pag nakita mo yung bata, fina-fundle niya yung kanyang genitals, what do you do? Sabihin mo, you just wash, you wash your hands, I will be back after two minutes, and then we will play with your new toy. So that is how you set limits. Kasi sinabi mo, after two minutes, babalik ako, dapat tapos ka na dyan. And you also offer alternatives. Wag yan yung gawin mo, ito na lang yung gawin natin. So, that is how you set limits and offer ad, uh, alternatives. Uh, you go wash your hands. Let's go cook dinner together. So that's how you offer and alternatives or options and set limitations. And also, you have to remember that you do not want to humiliate the child. Han mo nga pabainan when he or she is doing masturbation or exhibitionism. Why? Because the child will think that what he or she is doing is wrong. And kung wrong yung ginagawa niya, what will he or she do? Magtatago yan at dun niya gagawin ng walang nakakakita. And that may have a negative effect when the child will grow up. So those are the midwifery responsibilities that you should do when you are taking care for a preschooler who is under the phallic stage. Now we also have to talk about the psychosexual stage of the schooler or the school age period. This is what we call the latent stage. Ang ibig sabihin nito, the libido appears non-active or dormant. Ibig sabihin, nawawala po yung libido or libog ng isang bata when he or she is in the school-aged period. The libido is converted into concrete thinking and physical activity. Dahil po sa yung bata, ang dami niyang ginagawang school activities, ang dami niyang assignments, may pinapagawa pa yung kanyang nanay, therefore, wala na siyang time to meet or to have sexual needs. Nakoconvert po yung kanyang libido into other, uh, other activities that will require tremendous amount of energy. Kaya nga po, latent stage ang school age natin kasi non-active and dormant yung libido. The schoolwork and the chores of the child makes it difficult for them to have sexual interest. So what do we do when we are taking care of school-aged school uh, kids? Number one is that we have to help the child have a positive experience to boost his or her self-confidence, to prepare him for the conflicts of adolescence. So we have to prepare them to study well, to take their classes seriously, and to go and play and enjoy life para po ma-boost yung kanilang self-confidence. Teachers and parents also play an integral role in building the character of the child. So it is important that you tell the parents of the schooler 
to always be in contact with the teacher and sabi and dapat meron silang uh, collaboration so that the child will have a developed character during the school age period. Remember, na mas marami pong time ang ini-spend yung bata kasama yung kanyang teacher at kanyang mga classmates compared sa time na ini-spend niya with the mother or the father. So dapat there should be a collaboration between the teacher and the parent during the school age period. Now what is the play of the schooler? It is what we call the competitive play. Kung kanina po, sa associative play ng mga preschooler, they play together but there is no winner or loser, dito po sa competitive play, naglalaro sila ng sabay-sabay pero dito po meron ng winner or meron na ding loser. There is already a sense of competition. A good example of this is Jack Stone. So maglalaro kayo together, may mananalo, may matatalo. Ano pa? Patintero. Sipa. Okay, ganun po yung mga different plays that are involved in the uh, competitive play of the schooler. Ano pa yung mga laro ng text or pog or yung mga jackstone, ay no, a jack and poi I should say or yung mga uh, lastiko or yung rubber bands na linalaro ng mga bata. Yun po yung mga gustong gusto nilang uh, laruin because they have a feeling of self uh, actualization or accomplishment pag sila po ay naglalaro at sila ay nananalo during the school age period. Now, we also talk about the adolescent period wherein they are under the genital stage of the psychosexual development. Sabi dito, the adolescent starts to learn about sexual maturity and they start to establish satisfactory relationship with the opposite sex. Kung kanina po sa preschool period, yung bata po interested siya sa kanyang sariling sex organ, during the adolescent period, their interest will already stem out of their body. Sabi nila, alam ko na na ako ay may penis or ako ay may vagina and now it's time for me to explore the world and I will now relate to the opposite sex. So kung yung batang lalaki, he or she will, uh, he will have an interest getting to know a female individual. So ganun po yung sa genital stage. You get to have an interest in the opposite uh, sex. During the adolescent period, there is an establishment of new sexual aims and you have a, you start to find new love objects. So yung bata na adolescent, nagkakaroon na siya ng mga crushes. That is what we call new love objects. Nagkakaroon na siya ng mga crush sa mga BTS, sa mga Blackpink members, or nagkakaroon na siya ng mga collections ng mga color pink, color blue, color yellow. So that is how they start to establish their new sense of identity. Alam na kasi nila during the adolescent period kung ano yung gusto nila and it is now easier for them to establish their sexual aims and their new love objects. So what do we do when we are taking care of an adolescent uh, individual? We have to provide them adequate opportunity to relate to the opposite sex. So pag sinabi ng isang adolescent na maglalaro sila, and tinanong mo kung sino yung mga kasama niya, kung kunwari babae yung anak mo, and then sinabi niya na yung mga kasama niya ay lalaki, you have to give her the chance to relate with the opposite sex. Kasi dun sa mga opportunities na yon nagkakaroon siya ng adequate information about how to relate well with the opposite sex. However, hindi sa sinabi kong give them opportunity to relate well ay hinahayaan mo nang mapariwara yung bata. That is not the case. Even if you allow them adequate opportunity to relate well with other individuals, you have to set limitations po. Okay? So what do you do? You allow them to go out and watch movies, but samahan mo ng chaperon. Or you tell them na there is a curfew so that these individuals will not overstep their boundaries. Kasi nga, during the adolescent period, they are very curious of how the opposite genitals looks like. Kung wari yung babae, very interested siyang makita kung ano yung itsura ng tite or penis ng lalaki. Very interested siya kung ano ang 
feeling ng maghawak ng ganun kasi nga hindi pa niya na-experience. And sometimes, that curiosity will lead them to perform different acts that will also uh, jeopardize their future. So, pwedeng mag-engage yan ng premarital sex kung hinahayaan mo na lang without setting limitations. So, always remember that you have to provide appropriate opportunity for the child to relate with the opposite sex, but you have to set limitations. Aside from that, you have to let the adolescent individual verbalize their feelings regarding their new interests. So, pag sinabi ng bata, mga crush ko po si ganito, you allow them to speak their truth because it is also one way for you to establish their own sexual identity. Now, when we talk about the play of an adolescent, ang play nila ay athletic, meaning there are already sets of rules and guidelines na yung play nila are not just mere play, but already they follow a specific principle when playing. So a good example of this is basketball, volleyball, chess, badminton. Those are examples of plays that are usually engaged in by adolescent individuals. All right. So that basically concludes the psychosexual or the psychoanalytical theory. But before we end our discussion, let us uh, also look at the Oedipus complex, which is also related to the psychoanalysis. When we talk about the Oedipus complex, uh, this usually happens during toddlerhood. And the toddler kid is sexually attracted to his mother. And the child tries to become his father, kaya nga sinusuot niya yung pabango ng tatay niya or sinusuot niya yung sapatos or damit ng tatay niya because the kid, the male toddler, looks at his father as a competitor when it comes to the attention of the mother. So sabi dito, the father is seen as a rival at anong gustong gawin ng bata? The child wants to uh, stab the father or kill the father kasi nga ang tingin niya sa kanyang tatay ay kalaban or rival when it comes to getting the attention of the father. The Oedipus complex actually comes from a Greek mythology and it is a story of Oedipus. So si Oedipus kasi, kasama niya yung nanay niya paglaki and then his father uh, went to the sea uh, kasi kasama siya sa war. And then uh, Oedipus fell in love with his mother and then they eventually had sex together. And then pagdating ng tatay niya, ang ginawa ni Oedipus is pinatay niya yung tatay niya by stabbing him in the heart. So that is the reason why this is called the Oedipus complex. Yung bata daw, the toddler, is also experiencing the same complex as Oedipus did. So yung bata, gusto niyang stab yung nanay niya using his penis kasi nga sabi dito, the child is sexually attracted to the mother and the child also wants to stab his father using a knife kasi nga ang tingin ng bata sa kanyang tatay ay rival of the mother's attention. So if you can see on the pictures below, the child is disregarding the father. Parang uh, itsura dito, hate na hate nung lalaki na bata, yung kanyang tatay at mahal na mahal niya yung kanyang nanay. So sabi dito in the Oedipus complex, the kids in the phallic uh, uh, stage says, look, there's a penis. I have a penis, kunana. And then the kid falls in love with the mom. And then the kid wants to kill his father because father is in the way. I must kill him para masulo ko yung nanay ko. And then the, the father starts to assert na mas malakas siya. Kesa sa bata, the kid now fears being castrated and he gives up. Sabi dito, oh no, I think he knows that I am in love with his wife and he will castrate me. Katen na deto yung ko, no? Ituloy ko deto, I give up. So that is how the Oedipus complex usually happens during the toddlerhood. So ganito po yun. We also have a to talk about another complex which we call the Electra complex. Ito naman po nangyayari for female toddlers who are in the ages 1 and to 3 years old. So yung batang babae po, nagkakaroon siya ng penis envy. Okay? 
penis envy or uh, when uh, this happens wherein the baby girl wants to become like her father. Kasi nga, di ba sabi natin that the child will already start to discover her sexual um, identity. So nakita niya na wala siyang penis and then nakikita niya yung tatay niya na umiihe na nakatayo. The baby girl is sexually attracted to the father and she wants to become like her father someday. Pero sabi ng bata, paano yan? E yung tatay ko, umiihi ng nakatayo. Ako, umiihi ng nakaupo. So because of that, the child will now start to develop a sense of penis envy. Umapal isuna, kaya't namit nga adati sarili na nga penis because that is how she loves her father. The girl feels, feels a strong sense of competition also with the mother. So nga kagurgura met ni uh, baby girl, DJ Nanang Nad. The girl hates her mother because she sees her as a rival. The girl also has a strong desire for affection from her father. So nakikita nyo po dito sa picture, yung bata gustong gusto niya yung tatay niya. Okay? And that is also the reason why majority of females during their toddlerhood do not want to use skirts. They do not want to use flowery dresses. Kasi nga gusto nilang maging boyish because the center of affection is not on the mother but on the father. So that is what we call Electra Complex. Sir, normal lang po ba ito? Yes, it is normal and it will disappear when the child is already in the school age period wherein he, is he or she is able to attain uh, connections with other individual. So basically, that is the end of the psychosexual or psychoanalytic uh, development theory of Sir Sigmund Freud. The next theory that we will be learning is Eric Erikson's psychosocial development theory. Eric Erikson is the main proponent of this psychosocial development theory and it was promulgated from the years 1902 to the year 1996. Eric Erikson trained under the psychosexual theory and founded the psychosocial development theory. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Eric Erikson learned about the theory of Sir Sigmund Freud and what did he do? He studied the psychosexual theory and then he came out with his own psychosocial development theory. So, inaral niya ng maigi yung psychoanalysis. And then, sabi ni Eric Erikson, hindi ko gusto ito masyado, therefore I will make my own theory. And that is how he came up with the psychosocial development theory. According to Eric Erikson, a person's view of himself is far more important than any instinctive or sexual drive in determining one's behavior. Sabi ni Eric Erikson, hindi tama na sabihin natin na yung sexual drive ng isang tao ang nagdidictate sa kanyang behavior. That is not correct according to Eric Erikson. According to Eric Erikson, it is far more important to determine a person's view of himself and that will now direct the behavior of a person. In the psychosocial development theory, there is a conflict of two opposing forces at each life stage. And all of us will be conflicted with these two opposing forces as well, regardless of our age, gender, uh, sex, religion, all of us will have to face these two opposing forces. So when we complete a uh, developmental task or when we are able to choose among these two opposing forces, that will allow us to go through to the next stage. Now for you to better understand what these two opposing forces I am talking about, let me tell you a story about the one you feed. Uh, there is a legend which says that inside all of us, there are two wolves. When we were born, these wolves were also born alongside us. The black wolf is evil. It is full of anger. It is full of envy, sorrow, greed, regret, and everything bad in this world. However, the white one is good. 
It is full of joy, peace, love, serenity, benevolence, and everything good about this world. Now, every waking moment of your life, these two wolves fight each other. And then, when one wins, that will become your behavior. So, which do you think will win? Which among the two wolves will win? Well, the answer is the one you feed most. Kung sino yung mas pinapakain mo, yun yung wolf naman. During infancy, we are confronted with a developmental task which is trust versus mistrust. So when a child's needs are met, his discomforts are removed quickly, cuddled, or played with, or talked to, the infant develops a sense of trust. He becomes friendly, caring, trustworthy, compassionate, and loving when he grows up. However, when the care that is received by the infant is inconsistent, inadequate, or rejecting, the child will develop a sense of mistrust. Therefore, when he grows older, he will become a loner, he will have difficulty to have friends, he will be paranoid, and after a marriage, he will also become divorced. So what do we do? We should always make sure as midwives that we provide a primary care provider to the infant. We also have to tell the mother to give soft touches and uh, make gentle sounds for the baby and then provide the baby visual stimulation and involvement because all of these things will help the child create a sense of trust. So when a child has a developed trust, he becomes happy. But if there is mistrust, that is how the child looks like. During toddlerhood, the toddler is confronted with choosing between autonomy versus shame or doubt. But before we proceed, what do you mean when you say autonomy? When we talk about autonomy, it means self-government or independence or doing things on his or her own. Remember as well that during toddlerhood, there is a very strong sense of negativism or negativistic behavior. The child always answers no. Gusto mong kumain? No. Kumain ka ng ganito? No. Magsuot ka ng damit mo? No. These children always love saying no because it is a defense mechanism being used by them in pursuit of independence. What they are trying to say is, wag mo akong dinidiktahan because I am trying to do things on my own because autonomy is very important for the toddler. However, since they have minimal vocabulary, what happens is it is easier for them to say no instead of explaining themselves. So negativism is very normal for toddlers because they are in their way to developing the sense of autonomy. Now, we proceed to the developmental task. How do we help the child create autonomy instead of shame or doubt? Now, when the parents appreciate the things that a toddler does, like for example, opening a candy wrapper, flushing the toilet, the child develops a sense of independence or autonomy. So sinasabi, wow, very good baby, you did well. So when the parents appreciate the things that the child does, they get a sense of independence or autonomy. So what, do we, what happens to them? They become good leaders. They become independent workers. And they are persons with integrity when they grow up. However, if a parent is impatient, or they do everything for their children, or the children are not allowed to do what they want to do, they start to doubt their capabilities and at the end develop the sense of shame. So what becomes of the child? The child will become dependent, very laxed. He will also become, an, uh, he will also develop a sense of inferiority if he or she develops shame or doubt. Sasabihin niya, bakit kaya si nanay laging ginagawa niya na lang lahat para sa akin? Wala ba siyang tiwala sa abilidad ko? And because of that, there will be a feeling of doubt and shame. 
So what do we do as midwives? We should tell the parents to involve the child in decision-making because this will also help them to create a sense of autonomy. We also give them choices and we also praise the activity that is completed by the child. And then also at the end of the day, we should not judge the correctness of the child's decision. Kasi nga po, bata pa lang yan. Okay? So when the child says, uh, when you are trying to feed a child and sinabi mo, oy kumain ka, the child will say no, kasi negativism ang mangyayari. What will you do instead? You should offer choices. Sabihin mo, what do you want to eat? Do you want to eat eggs or hot dog? That way, the child will not be able to answer no because the question is not answerable by yes or a no. So, mamimili yan. And by letting him or her decide, you are able to help him attain a sense of autonomy. So, that is the developmental task of a toddler, autonomy versus shame or doubt. We proceed to the preschooler. For the preschooler, their developmental task is initiative versus guilt. But what do we mean when we say initiative? Initiative is learning how to do new things. Now, when a child or a preschooler is given the freedom to initiate motor play or exposed to play materials like clay or finger paint or answered when he is asking a question, or they are allowed to fantasize or imagine, the child learns initiative. When he grows up, he becomes creative, excellent in their chosen field. They are not afraid to do things, and they are very vocal or outspoken when they have a sense of initiative. However, when a child is made to feel like play activities are bad, Laro ka lang ng laro. Bakit ka laro ng laro? Nakakainis ka pag ganun na yung attitude ng nanay. Or his questions are made to feel stupid. Tanong ka ng tanong. Wala naman sense yung tinatanong mo. They may have a sense of guilt at the end of the day. So what happens when the child develops guilt? They will have limited brainstorming or problem-solving activities. They will also always need the approval of others. Kung magde-decide sila, kailangan merong magde-decide para sa kanila because they cannot decide on their own because there is a feeling of guilt. Paano kung ito yung na-decide ko at mali? Oh, so wala silang sense of initiative. They will also become introvert, soft-spoken, or mahilig komopya ng style ng ginagawa ng iba, which we call copycats. So what do we do as midwives? We should always allow the preschooler to play. And we should also tell the parents to support the things that they want to do or that they are interested in. But always provide safety and set limitations. So when the child wants to play outside, sabihin mo, sige, maglaro ka sa labas, but after five minutes, babalik ka dito. Or, Maglaro ka sa labas, pero hindi ka pwedeng lumabas ng gate. That is how you provide safety and set limitations. And also, while they are playing or doing things that they want to do, you should be giving them supervision. So pag gusto niyang mag-crafting or maggawa-gawa ng mga uh, uh, small projects using knives or using scissors, dapat you should be supervising these children. Because that is also a way of providing safety. So that is the developmental task of a preschooler, initiative versus guilt. Yeah, and so we allow the child to do the things that they want to do. All right, so that they will not develop a sense of guilt. We proceed to the developmental task of a school ager, which is industry versus inferiority. When we talk about industry, it means doing things well. Kung kanina sa initiative, it is learning to do new things. Dito naman, it is learning how to do things well, or what we call the virtue of industriousness. Now, if a child's works are praised or rewarded by their parents or their teachers, 
or their achievements are acknowledged by their parents. Wow, perfect score. Wow, ang taas ng grade mo dito sa project mo. If the child hears those kinds of things, they develop a sense of pride and their sense of industry grows. Di ba nga, pag nakakarinig ka ng mga ganong klaseng appreciation, you will also feel proud of yourself and then at the end of the day, you will try your best to uh, perform those kinds of things again. You will become better and better every time na merong nagko-compliment sa'yo. Because basically, that's how, it is, uh, that's how it's done. So what will happen? The child will grow to become confident, creative, appreciative of others' works, and they will also become very good at their craft. So pag gusto niyang magpainting, sobrang galing magpainting niyan, or pag kumanta or sumayaw, they will become very good at their chosen talent when they have a sense of industry. But when a child's work is ignored, Ma, look, oh, perfect ako sa test namin. Ah, ano yung pinapakita mo? Kung ganun yung attitude ng nanay. Or kunwari, nagpa-practice yung bata habang kumakanta. And then the mother said, tumigil ka nga dyan, kanta ka ng kanta. Hey? Or the efforts of the child is not seen. Or the products of what they are doing are just fruit of busy work. Hmm, tila bo braim dita. Kung ano-ano lang yung ginagawa mo, imbes na maghugas ka o tulungan mo ako dito. Kung ganun yung attitude ng nanay, the child will become inferior. So what will happen? The child will develop in inferiority complex. Mahihiya, mahihiya yan, mahihiyain. They will also become non-appreciative of other people's works. Kahit na maganda yung ginagawa ng katabi, magpa-fault finding yan. Sasabi niya, hindi naman siya magaling, hindi naman siya maganda, hindi naman mag maganda yung ginawa niya. Things like that. They will also be very poor on things. Hindi sila magaling sa kahit anong bagay. They will also become not interested in anything. They will also have repeated failure. Bakit? Kasi nga, para sa kanila, wala lang yung mga accomplishments na yun. So, why bother? Right? So, that's what happens when the child develops a sense of inferiority. So, as midwives, what are we expected to do? We should tell the parents to give rewards to children if they are able to satisfactorily attain or complete a task. We should also allow them to participate in chores. And you let the child assemble a small project so that the child will also feel rewarded. That is how you create a sense of industry in the mind and heart of a school-ager. So that is the developmental task of a school-aged uh, individual, industry versus inferiority. So that is how you involve a child to become industrious. Right? Now, we proceed to the adolescent period. The developmental task of an adolescent is identity versus role confusion. Most of you are already in this stage. So what do we mean when we say identity? What does the adolescent do during this stage? The adolescent will start to integrate everything that he have learned in the past. Yung trust versus mistrust, yung mga natutunan niya sa mga life stages na yon, he will integrate it to form a self-image. And that self-image now will become his or her identity. Now, if the adolescent is able to do so, alam niya kung ano yung mga strengths and limitations niya, alam niya kung ano yung pag-uugali niya, he attains a sense of identity. He will become straight, he will become determined to do the things that he wants to do, he will be very good in decision-making. Bakit? Kasi nga, alam niya kung sino siya, alam niya kung anong gusto niyang maging, because he has a sense of identity. And that person will also grow up to become credible. So that's what happens when identity is created by the adolescent. However, if the adolescent is not able to integrate the things that he have learned and he is unsure of himself or herself, they will have identity crisis and role confusion. Kasi hindi na niya alam kung sino siya or kung anong gusto niyang maging. Or ano siya talaga? So that's identity, crisis, or role confusion. They become uncertain of what they can do. 
what they are and who they want to be. So what happens? The child will grow to be lax. He will have no direction in his life. He will have the feeling of ambivalence. When you say ambivalence is the uh, two opposing emotions. Gusto niya pero ayaw niya. Parang hindi siya. The person cannot make up his or her mind. There will also become uh, poor decisions. Okay. So that's what happens when the child develops identity crisis or role confusion. So as midwives, what do we tell the parents of these adolescents? We should tell them to avoid giving them negative identity. Kasi nga po, they are still confused during that period of adolescent. Adolescence, I should say. They have identity crisis. So ano yung dapat na iniiwasan natin? We avoid giving them negative identity. Things like, Oo, ikaw, pariwara ka. Pokpok ka. Or bobo ka. Those are negative identity. Bakit natin hindi pwedeng gawin yun for adolescent people? Because people without any definite identity, kasi nga wala silang confused sila, di ba? They may prefer negative identity rather than not having any identity at all. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Kung yung isang bata or adolescent ay meron siyang role confusion or meron siyang identity crisis, and here comes the parent who says, Oo, ikaw, bobo ka, wala kang silbi, wala kang kwenta. The child will say, Ah, wala pala akong kwenta. Bobo pala ako. Why? Because you are giving them negative identity. Sabi niya, mas gusto ko na lang na negative yung identity ko. At least kilala ko ang sarili ko kesa naman confused ako. Okay? So that's the reason why we do not give negative identity to adolescents who have role confusion. Instead, we give them opportunity to discuss their emotions and the events important to him or her. So, halika dito, mag-uusap tayo. That's how you allow them to explore their feelings so that they can arrive at a self-image. You also have to offer them support and praise for decision-making. So, pag sinabi niya, gusto kong ganito ma, gusto kong mag-asawa ng lalaki, kung lalaki siya, you give support or praise the decision of the person. Because basically, they are trying to ascertain or determine who they are. So that's the developmental task of an adolescent, which is identity versus role confusion. We proceed to the developmental task of a young adult, which is intimacy versus isolation. When we say intimacy, it is the ability to relate well with other people to attain a long-lasting friendship or relationship. So intimacy is creating a bond with other people. Always remember that if a person has a strong sense of identity, kilala niya ang sarili niya at kilala niya kung ano siya or kung anong gusto niyang maging, if a person has that strong sense of character or identity, he is able to create a deeper friendship with another people. Gaya nga ng sabi nila, kilalanin mo muna ang sarili mo bago ka magmahal ng ibang tao. That is basically the basis of um, intimacy versus isolation. If a person has a strong sense of identity, he will be able to create a differ, deeper friendship with another person. So, nang ibig sabihin nito, that person will be in a lasting commitment and that person will know how to love. Kasi kaya niyang mahalin yung sarili niya. Therefore, he can also love other individuals. However, if a person has role confusion, so hindi pa niya alam kung ano siya, kung sino siya, or kung anong gusto niyang maging, that person will have difficulty building a lasting relationship because of the constant fear of rejection. And in the end, they will fail to love and they will become isolated. So what will happen when they grow up? Yung mga isolated individuals, they have the tendency to create or commit abortion. Why? 
because they're unsure kung gusto nilang maging nanay kasi hindi ko nga alam kung ano ako ngayon. They, hindi ko alam din kung gusto ko ba talagang maging nanay. So in the end, they will commit abortion, they will subject themselves to divorce, they will become paranoid or insecure, and mag-isa lang sila. They will not enter our lasting relationship. So what do we do if we have individuals or friends who are already young adults who are confronted with these developmental tasks? Number one is you have to provide avenue for verbalization of feelings. Kasi po nakakatakot maging mag-isa. When a person says, gusto ko ng mag-asawa pero wala namang nagkakagusto sa akin, you allow them to verbalize their fears and their emotions because you are able to ease the pain of isolation. Aside from that, you have to make them feel that they belong. So sir, paano? Uh, dadalhin ba namin siya pag meron kaming mga updates or things like that? No. Not necessarily. You just have to endorse them to individuals or groups which may be able to help. For example, meron kayong integral youth ministry or singles for Christ or kung mahilig siya sa sports, dalhin mo siya sa isang sports center para makihalubilo sa ibang tao and then there will become a feeling of belongingness. So that's how you uh, manage intimacy versus isolation for a young adult. So that's what happens when the adult has a sense of isolation. And that's what happens when a person has intimacy. Now we proceed to you, the middle adults. Most of the, your parents are already middle adults. And their developmental task is generativity versus stagnation. When we say generativity, it is the concern that one feels not just for themselves, but also to their families, community, and to the world. So when we say generativity, it is a sense of responsibility to guide the next generation. Kung baga dito sa generativity, you are not just in love with yourself, you are not just in love with your partner and your family, but you are also in love with the community, the society, and your country. Okay? So if a person is able to assume different roles or various roles in the community, kunwari siya ay nanay, aside from nanay, siya ay asawa, siya ay president ng parent-teacher association, or siya ay isang officer ng TODA, or siya ay isang member ng kooperativa, or siya ay member ng SISA. So marami siyang mga roles na ginagampanan, not just in the family, but also around the community and the society, what will happen? That middle adult will regain their self-worth and they will have a sense of generativity. Sasabihin, ay, marami pa akong kayang gawin. Generativity ang tawag natin doon. So what will happen if a middle adult develops generativity? They will become productive. They will also become involved in nation building. Tumutulong sila pag may mga projects ang gobyerno. Kung may mga uh, oplan linis or oplan makakalikasan, tumutulong sila. Why? Because they have self-worth and they feel responsible in taking care of the community and the world. Thus, they become active and renewed. However, if a person assumes only one role, they may find themselves unable to cope with change. Mahihirapan sila sa mga changes na nangyayari sa society. Kunwari siya ay nanay lang ng limang anak and then asawa siya. So kung yun lang yung role niya, hindi na siya halos lumalabas sa bahay, the things that she does are just household chores. Wala nang iba, hindi na siya nakikipag-usap sa ibang tao. That will be stagnation. Okay? So what will happen? That person will choose to become just full-time mother. Or for them, life becomes boring. Or they will feel antiquated. Or ayaw na nilang mag-change or magbago. Takot na sila sa change when they have a feeling of stagnation. So what do we do if we come across middle adults who are stagnant? We counsel them regarding community involvement. Or we 
invite them to join different activities in the community. You also have to let them verbalize their fears of being worthless. Baka sasabihin nila, feeling ko wala akong kwenta kasi nandun lang ako sa bahay nag-aalaga sa mga anak ko. That is the time that you involve them in community activities. Kunwari sabihin mo, kung yan yung nafe-feel mo, you would, uh, I think, ma- mag- mas maganda sa'yo kung lumabas ka din ng bahay, tulungan mo kami kasi meron kaming mga Christmas drive or health education para sa mga nanay. So by that, he will, yeah, she will uh, regain her feeling of uh, worthiness. So meron pa siyang worth, parang ganon. Alright? So that is what we do for middle adults. Uh, we try to inculcate generativity instead of stagnation. So pag merong generativity, yung nanay or yung tao, kaya niyang pinagsasabay-sabay yung mga maraming roles. Marami siyang roles sa community. But if a person is stagnant, ganyan lamang po. And lastly, we have the old age, mga lolo't lola natin. They will have a developmental task known as ego integrity versus despair. Now, what do we mean when we say ego integrity? It means the acceptance of one's life's decision or the feeling of wholeness and success during your old age. Kunwari yung lola mo, nakaupo lang siya. And then nakasmile siya. And then tinanong mo, Lola, bakit ka nagsismile? And then your lola said, Buti na lang pinakasalan ko yung lolo nyo. Buti na lang hindi ako nag-aral pero nagtrabaho ako para pag-aralin yung mga nanay at uh, nanay nyo. Because of that, we became successful. So, walang regret yung lola. What will happen? Or what does that mean? It means that she has ego integrity. So, let's take a look. If a person looks back at life and appreciates the choices he or she has made in the past and is happy for what is happening in the present life, that person has a sense of ego integrity and they will become helpful in bringing up trusting grandchildren. But if a person wishes life to be relieved all over again, just go... Sana hindi ko na ginawa ito noon. Okay. Looks back at life in regret. They may have difficulty accepting the present and in the end, be despaired. They may have difficulty in child rearing. Hindi sila makakatulong sa, mga apun, uh, sa pagpalaki ng mga apo nila kasi nga galit na galit sila sa mundo. Why? Because they were not able to do the things that they want. Therefore, wala silang sense of ego integrity. I would also like to add that people who have ego integrity are the ones who are very eager to meet death. Yung mga gusto na lang matay, yung mga happy or I should say secured na sila na pwede na silang mamatay. Yung sinasabi nilang yun, mabaling ko matayin, tagamin nakita kay nga naragsakin. That's what we call ego integrity. Wala na siyang pinagsisisihan. But for people who have despair in their hearts, ito yung mga ayaw pang mamatay. Why? Or takot pang mamatay. Why? Because they are still living up to the possibilities na, ay, baka may gumanda pa ang buhay ko. Alright? So that's the old age, the developmental task of the old age, ego integrity versus despair. And that concludes our second pre-recorded video lecture for the subject NCM 107, Care of the Mother, the Child, and the Adolescent. Sana po ay nag-enjoy kayo sa pakikinig sa akin in as much as I also enjoyed talking. And before I leave our class, I would like you to log on to our Google Classroom today. And then you will see your activity posted on our Google Classroom. So please feel free to browse your activity now so that you can start uh, preparing for that. The deadline for your new activity will be on Saturday. So again, maraming maraming salamat everyone for listening. Enjoy the rest of the day. Keep safe and please stay alive. I'll see you very soon. Bye!